All right, let's take a look at uh, Governor Moore's development plan. One of, one of his proposals is receiving pushback from the Maryland League of Conservation Voters, which is a key ally of the governor's environmental brain trust. Senate Bill 474 is a proposal by the governor to, to build large scale data centers here in Maryland. We don't want them all in Virginia. Virginia has something like 300. Particularly, uh, they've, they've targeted the Alcoa aluminum plant that's abandoned in Frederick County. And apparently the major cause for opposition to, is the fact that they will have 168 diesel fueled backup generators. Yeah. Mike, access to live streaming data, that's, you know, that's the lifeblood these days. It's essential for business development. It's essential for life, really. I mean, you think about your handheld uh, devices, but that takes an enormous amount of energy to produce. Uh, is there a balance that can be achieved here? I think there has to be. And I think it's, it, it also ties back to the, to the discussion we just had. Um, you look at jurisdictions in Northern Virginia right now who are generating millions and millions of dollars in revenue as a result of data centers, the, the, the development of data centers. We're not doing anything there. And so you look at the activities taking place there. We've got to get ourselves in the game. And I'm not even so sure that we're not we're not late to the game and becomes a real challenge for us to even trying to catch up. But we've at least got to get or get a toe in the water. And so I think we've got to do it from that perspective. I think there's a way that we can begin to think about how do you address the energy needs? Um, you're going to have to have a, a, a un uninterruptible power source. So you've got to be able to have those backups. You've got to have that to make these work and make these viable. And so I think that's a reality. Um, I think as we continue to focus on technological applications and how we continue to refine and improve um, how we can use diesel, how we can use other um fossil fuels, I think you're going to have to come up with a way to do that because you're not using these on a regular basis. I mean, these, these are backups and they have to be tested periodically, but they don't have to be run unless there's, a, you know, we have another issue with power. And I think that that's the reality, the, the, the middle ground we've got to try and get to is how can we do that and be okay with that? You know, Mark, uh, you know, Mike just touched on the, on the key element, which is having sufficient energy for our demands in this electronic environment. I mean, it's, it seems to me that environmentalists who are opposing uh, economic development because it's the, they, they need energy is kind of missing, missing the ball here, is that we need energy and energy development in order to have our modern lives uh, fully uh, satisfied. But let, let's be more specific, and, and, and Mike did touch on this, it is we need the energy, but we need reliable energy. We need to be able to have the assurance that it's uh, available in an un uninterrupted way, uh, and that's a, that is really in many ways the Achilles heel of relying increasingly on renewable power because you have this issue where uh, if power is not available, things will stop. Uh, and I suspect not just power, not just data centers, but individuals will increasingly be relying on backup generators to assure that they can have uh, uninterrupt, uninterrupted. Uh, access to electricity. Um, but you touched on it. Uh, Loudoun County, I, I think, is just filled, uh, not just Loudoun, but in particular Loudoun, uh, which is just over the border from Maryland. So there really should be no reason other than government and politics and economics that uh, Maryland shouldn't be able to tap into this market. Well, we're very proud of our, our, our you know, of, of our uh, medical technology centers here in Montgomery County, but they need reliable sources of energy, and you need these tech centers if you want if you want to continue to be attractive to that community. You need to be able to give them and provide them the power that they need. It's just I think it's just it's simple math at at that point. And it's interesting, natural gas is a great source of uh, backup power to, to uh, provide support for backup power, but we kind of know where we're going there as well. Uh, so it, it's one of these issues where if, if you, it's like the balloon, you, you push things in a different direction. Uh, if you're going to have backup power, you also probably need to be able to allow for more natural gas installations. Well, and I think it's the same thing we tend to see a, a lot, which is this notion of it's it's just binary, right? So we, if we want to do this, we have to do, we can't do this. And the reality is there has to be a, a middle ground for us to be able to achieve this. Do we want to see increases in fossil fuels? 
No, not necessarily. But we also have to recognize we need that uninter uninterrupted power source or at least a backup. And so how do we come up with the best way to deliver that in the most efficient way possible? Well, we could do what Georgia just did. Put it, put in a brand new nuclear power uh, power plant. <laughs> That, that's what we can that's what we can do that's some food for thought it's, it's not going to fly today but uh we need, we need more energy 